All right, I'm back with another video on Portfolio Visualizer. Um, recently, I came back to the tool because I wanted to test some ideas. And of course, uh, like many of you, saw something completely different. After I got over the initial shock, I go, okay, what's, what's different here aside from just the jarring new look? Um, which is, <laughs> I think it's a bad move on any service provider, whether they are paid or free, when you got your users trained on a certain way of doing things and then all of a sudden you make some pretty drastic changes, but then you don't tell anybody about it beforehand, right? So all of a sudden it just pops up one day and you're like, what the heck am I looking at? Uh, and that was my initial reaction when I saw the, the site again um, after a little hiatus. Uh, fortunately, many of the tools are still here. So if you go to tools and you uh, click down on the, the drop down here, um, they're mostly in here and they work for the most part the same, the entry of the data and whatnot. It's gonna be a little bit different, uh, but it's just annoying that they made these, this change. Uh, anyways, the tool that I use the most at Portfolio Visualizer is the back test of the portfolio where you can enter your tickers and then um, do the back test. Um, here's the problem with this. The problem is that now they've changed their model completely. It used to be that if you were using portfolio back test with tickers, you can get uh, data going back as far as uh, it's available for that particular fund. So for this one, you can see that uh, VXUS, the XUS uh, Vanguard ETF, goes back to 2011, and that was kind of the limiting factor for, uh, for this portfolio. But if you look at the result, it only goes back 10 years to 2015, and you say, well, why is that? Well, the reason is that they've added this new limit where the back test only goes back 10 years for free accounts, which is a total bummer because 10 years is not long enough to uh, do a proper back test, in, in my opinion. I mean, it's better than five years, but it's, it's, not, you know, it's not good enough. Um, so that spurred me to go ahead and just make my own. And that's what I did here. So I'm calling this Fuchs Portfolio Visualizer. Um, it's still a work in progress, but I think for the most part, it works as uh, I expect it to. So I'm just gonna share it with you guys and let you download it and play it, play with it. Um, but you can see here that on the left side, you would enter your portfolio, put in the tickers that you want, the allocation, um, your starting balance, whether you're gonna contribute anything and whether you wanna rebalance on an annual basis or not, by default, it's a yes. And when you plug it in, it does the same thing. It goes and looks at all of these tickers. It pulls up the data. It does the uh, back test. It gives you all the metrics. And uh, again, it's limited by the data that's available by the particular investment that you're looking at. So uh, if we were to look at this, I think the limiting factor here is gold that goes back to 2005. Um, and that's what, that's what you get. But uh, you can play around with this and say, you know, what if I change my allocation? So I want to make this 60% to QQQ instead of 50, maybe reduce the uh, bond allocation to 20, the long-term treasury, and then the large cap value allocation down to 10 to get it to uh, 100. And you can see what that does to the portfolio uh, compared to uh, where we had it before. Um, these other portfolios is an 80-20 stocks, bonds, and then 100% uh, all stocks. And you can just see how it, how it works out when you, when you do that. Um, again, it works as I expect, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of bugs in this uh, just because uh, I'm still developing it. I appreciate any feedback you guys can give me. I can't provide technical support, but if you see something glaringly wrong and, and tell me about it, uh, I'll collect them and maybe, uh, you know, make iterations to this that you can then re-download from the link. But the way this works is that the data here is coming from Yahoo Finance, which is uh, completely free. So you go to Yahoo Finance, you put in your ticker, select historical prices, and this is designed to look at things on a monthly basis. So you just have to up, update the, uh, the list here with tickers that you want. By default, I put in quite a number of tickers that are pretty common that I use all the time. So it's, uh, it's got small cap value in here. It's got total stock market, 
It's got total bond market, uh, so on and so forth, gold. Um, there's a REIT in here, different types of treasuries like intermediate treasuries here. So it's all in here. You just have to update it on a monthly basis because I think the prices uh, by default are going to about the end of May, um, but no further than that. And then this tab is just the federal funds rate. This is considered the risk-free interest rate. It's also on a monthly cadence and you can get this at the Federal Reserve. But this is used to calculate things like Sharpe Ratio and the Sortino Ratio, um, where you need a risk-free rate. Anyways, check it out. You can see portfolio growth on the top, um, annual returns below that, and then your drawdowns uh, uh, as the last chart. I think it works pretty well, and as far as I can tell, there aren't any glaring huge issues with this uh, at the moment, but like I said, I can't provide technical support, but if you see something, leave me a comment and uh, we'll take it from there. Anyways, hope you enjoy. See you in the next one. Later. Bye.